The title of my video essay is Disney Should Not Be Labeled Racist. In this video essay, I will essentially be arguing that based on the theories of recodification, cultural appropriation, and the representation of race, the recreation or adaption of Aladdin and Len shows that Disney has learned from their previously incorrect representation of cultures and how the company now creates films that accurately depict characters. To introduce the racist past of Disney, we can attribute a few movies. In the movie Peter Pan, they reference native people as redskins, which is a racist slur. Um, in Aristocrat, a Siamese cat was used to play the piano with chopsticks and was animated with almond-shaped eyes. The exaggerated stereotypes of Chinese people as voiced by a white actor. Finally, Jim Crow, who was a crow that you know, exhibited exaggerated stereotypes of black people, um, was voiced by a white actor. In addition, the name Jim Crow was actually related to Jim Crow laws that actually allowed for racial segregation in the US. Despite the dark past, Disney attempts to recuperate for the racist past by adding warning labels when streaming these type of movies. Jack Zipe mentions that movies influence the manner in which children conceive the world and places in it. It can be understood that movies play a big role in children's lives. So what are are the movies that I'm gonna be talking about. In particular, the video essay will focus on Aladdin and Mulan. So what are they about? Aladdin is a Middle Eastern folktale that was interpreted from Antoine Gallon's 1001 Arabian Night. Aladdin is a lovable street urchin who meets Princess Jasmine and goes through a series of events to fight Baisa Jafar. Um, whereas Mulan is based on a legendary folktale from the Northern and Southern dynasties of the Chinese history. To begin, let's look at the definition of recodification. Jack Sipes mentions the adaption of folk material was a recodification of the material to make it suitable for discursive requirements. Basically, Zipes says changes are made to folktale to make them more appropriate for a specific audience. A lot in the animation can be seen as a Western perception of the Arab world. Through further analysis, we can see that the Arabic accent was portrayed as evil through Visa Jafar while Jasmine and Aladdin, who were the protagonists, didn't have any accents. So the good people didn't have accents and the Arabic people who had an Arabic accent were portrayed as evil. This is removed from the live action. In addition, the directors removed the racist line from Arabian Nights, uh, a song in Aladdin. Uh, they cut off your ear if you don't like your face. It's barbaric, but hey, it's home. In this way, Disney removes racism and bases their perception of the Arab world on the Arab world and not Hollywood's perception. Next, we can look at uh, another form of change that Disney makes to be less racist and by, re by removing the songs from live action to maintain cultural accuracy and realism. A fighter wouldn't randomly start singing just before going to war. Removing the song respects the cultural folktale. Mushi was Hollywood's perception of a Chinese dragon. Through further analysis, it was blatantly disrespectful to Chinese culture uh, by making Chinese dragons skinny, funny, and plain out disrespectful. In addition, the live action removes the almond shaped eyes as you can see to the picture on the bottom right uh, with that were used to represent Chinese people. Next, Disney create more movies by looking at cultural appropriation. Uh, and the quotation here shows the definition that cultural appropriation is individuals from rich and powerful majority cultures often appropriate from disadvantaged indigenous and minority cultures. Um, definition also goes to say the oppression of minority cultures. For the making of Aladdin, Disney actually uh, takes advice from the Muslim Public Affairs Council and they mention Muslim culture does not count, uh, does not support the excessive exposure of skin. Uh, Disney saw help, sought help in the change allowed for a better representation of culture. Disney, as well in the Mulan movie, sent their costume and makeup director to China to study art and culture. And they even met military advisors to give advice for the costume design uh, during the fighting scenes. Uh, and this was done in Shanghai and Beijing. This allowed for a movie that had historically accurate clothing attire. Disney tries to increase the representation of gender within the race. Dow mentions that just as gender is a social construct to which a society defines what it means to be masculine or feminine, the race also is a social construct, uh, which means 
race plays a role in gender. Similarly, as Tajima mentions, that Asian women are often portrayed in the media as exotic and often sexualized. In the Asian race, women are treated with much more respect. However, in previous animations of these movies, it was a Western society's perception. Disney made Jasmine a role model for young women. In the animation, Jasmine needed a man in order to become a sultan, which is basically a king. Whereas in the live action, the king offers Jasmine to be the next sultan despite her major condition. But she didn't need a man in order to be the next sultan. Similarly, Disney allows Mulan to be seen as a role model for young women. In the animation, she cuts off her hair to impersonate a soldier. However, in the live action, she never cuts her hair and Disney allows her to own her femininity. In addition, the live action, uh, she was actually offered to join the greatest decorated warriors, unlike the position of counsel in the animation, which shows that women can do anything and are more respected. In conclusion, we can see that using recodification, we can see that Disney removes racist characters and harmful animations. Next, Disney sought out cultural significance, which allowed the movie to be more accurate representation of culture. Finally, Disney showed that women are treated highly within the race. We can use these conclusions and draw that Disney no longer creates racist movies. Finally, here are my references.